Hello everybody, it is I, Serbidian, welcoming you once again back aboard the Hype Train. Today, we're moving on a little bit further beyond waypoints into navigation. So, let's start off with Fleet Movement Auto Routing. Now, this feature does exist in VB6, but it looks like it has been expanded a little bit. So, Fleet Movement Orders section of the Naval Organization window has an option called Auto Route by System. When this option is selected, the normal movement destination list will be replaced by a list of systems that the fleet is capable of reaching. Clicking on a system and clicking add move will generate all the movement orders from the current system to the destination system. The system locations option will be automatically selected and the destination list for the new system will be displayed so the player can complete any specific orders. The determination of which systems can be reached is based on three checkboxes to the right hand side of the same tab. Assume fleet is jump capable. If checked, the algorithm will assume the fleet will be tr able to transit any jump point. If not checked, the fleet will have to be jump capable to reach any system beyond the jump point without a gate. Check danger rating. If checked, the fleet will not be able to travel through any system where the danger rating is higher than the protection value of the friendly warships in that system. And exclude alien controlled. If checked, the fleet will not be able to travel through any system that the player has flagged as alien controlled. Fleets have two stored values. Avoid danger and avoid alien systems. These are set on by clicking the second and third checkboxes above and will affect the algorithm used for standing and conditional orders for that fleet in addition to the order route. A system can also be flagged on the galactic map as excluded from order route. For example, there may be a shorter route in terms of kilometers but longer in terms of transits. You can block one of the systems on the original route so the algorithm will always choose your preferred path. The list of systems will highlight any populated systems in light green and any other colony systems in dark green. The total population will be shown, greater than zero, or the number of the most important installation type. In order of priority, these are automated mines, including asteroid miners, then terraformers, including orbital, then tracking stations. This is similar to the population tree view on the economic window functions. These four screenshots show an example journey. In the first, a US fleet in the Ada Cassiope system, highlighted at the bottom, wants to return to Seoul. In the second, the potential system list is displayed. As the exclude alien controlled option is checked, the fleet cannot travel through the Commonwealth systems starting with EV Lacerte, so none of those systems are an option. The third screenshot shows the result as the pathfinding algorithm takes the fleet on a longer route via Oregon, then displays the destination list for Seoul. The fourth shows the journey of a French survey ship. In this case, the algorithm has determined that using Lagrange points in two of the systems will make the journey shorter. Next, we have one of my favorite changes in C Sharp, an updated civilian trade algorithm. In VB6, civilian freighters without orders will move to a trade location, which is defined as a population with a balance in one or more trade goods that is greater than the capacity of the freighter. On arrival, the freighter will check the trade balances and try to find a suitable destination for one of them. If a destination is found, the move will be plotted. If not, the freighter will search for a new trade location. It could be more intelligent, but not without a larger performance overhead. In C Sharp Aurora, a freighter without orders, regardless of current location, will search known space for the closest population that has export trade goods, taking into account any other freighters already en route to collect that trade good and any pathfinding restrictions such as danger. If a suitable trade good is located, the freighter will look for the population closest to the pickup point, which has an import requirement for that trade good. Again, take into account any freighter already en route to drop off the same good at that destination. If no destination is found, the freighter checks the pickup point for any other trade good options with suitable destinations. If that doesn't work, the freighter checks the next population based on distance, etc., until it has checked every possible combination of populations and trade good routes in known space. If a valid route is found, all the orders are plotted using any Lagrange shortcuts. Then the next freighter repeats the process. Infrastructure is checked first at each population before any other trade good. Freighters understand the difference between low gravity infrastructure and normal infrastructure and will move the correct type of infrastructure to appropriate destination. Given that every civilian freighter without order is checking every system, population, and trade good in known space to find a suitable trade route, there might be concern regarding performance. The current campaign, as of, interestingly enough, March 2018, was an ideal testbed. As 
Steve removed every order from every fleet due to the incompatibility of the VB6 and C Sharp database structures. This meant that the first trade phase after program start, the code was checking all 364 civilian freighters in a universe with 495 star systems, 1,343 jump points, 380 Lagrange points, 345 populations, and 23 different races. God, how slow was that game? The first trade phase, including identifying routes for all freighters and creating 1,896 individual movement orders, including load and unload, transits, and Lagrange points, required 1.01 seconds. That is absolutely insane performance. I honestly think that would probably take hours for VB6 to calculate. That is crazy. That is absolutely amazing. And this is one of the reasons why C Sharp is going to be so damn good. <sighs> Those are some really nice numbers. Colony fleets follow similarly complex rules, explained in the link below. Routing 198 civilian colony fleets using these rules, along with every other ship with standing orders, added a further 619 movement orders and acquired 0.56 seconds. So it took him one and a half seconds, fractionally over, one and a half seconds to recalculate every civilian freighter and colony fleet. And every ship with standing orders. I mean... What's not to like? Alright, so now that we know that civilians are not going to be a performance hit, what can they do for us? So, as in VB6, civilians will still transport installations for player races. However, there are some changes to the UI, the pathfinding, and the costs for this service. In terms of cost, in, in VB6, the cost was a set fee of 10 wealth for multi-system transportation and 5 wealth for same system, regardless of freighter size. In C Sharp, the cost is 5 times the number of installations, times the systems traveled, times the installation type cargo points divided by 25,000. So for a standard freighter with a single cargo hold, transporting a construction factory to a destination 4 systems away, the cost will be 20 wealth. Calculation is 5 times the number of installations, 1 times the system traveled, 4 times 25,000 divided by 25,000, because the installation is 25,000. Destinations in the same system as the start point count as half a system. Uh, it's just presumably so you don't get dev null. For pathfinding, civilian ships will use the same logic as transporting trade goods. They will search for player contracts before searching for trade goods. Note that this means you can effectively commandeer civilian shipping for your own needs in an emergency, but doing so will disrupt normal civilian operations such as moving infrastructure. There is a civilian economy tab on the economics window, which has three lists. To the left is a list of installations at the colony. The center has a list of installations demanded, and the right has a list of installations supplied. Above the center list is a drop-down with all types of known installations. Above the right-hand list are the installations that the colony can supply. For both of the latter lists, there is an amount column, which is the amount demanded or supplied, and an assigned column, which is the number of the installations for which a freighter contract is already assigned. This is a subset of the amount. The lists can be managed with the buttons below. Adding or editing will trigger a pop-up box so you can type in the amount required. The screenshots show a colony in Zeta Hercules with supply contracts for various installations. Most are already fully assigned. The Avalon Colony with several demand contracts, again, most are already assigned. And a civilian freighter has been assigned one of the web contracts and is en route to the pickup point. Note that shipping lines will show up on the naval organization window if desired, although you cannot give them orders directly. All right, we've got some minor changes now. First up, Space Master changes to installations. So when in Space Master mode, the civilian economy tab gains an extra drop down and three extra buttons. These allow the Space Master to change the number of installations at a colony or add new types. This replaces part of the functionality from the VB6 SM modification window. We also have a change to the maintenance locations view. There is a new display option on the galactic map to highlight maintenance locations. Very handy. These are displayed as dashed blue circles. 
We also have a minor but very useful change. If you select a system on the galactic map and then click one of the buttons for the economics window, so summary, industry, research, etc., the economics window will open with the most important population in that system if one exists already selected. Important in this context uses the same rules as the order of populations in each system on the economics tree window. I expect with this rule that the galactic map is going to become a lot more useful. All right, uh, next we have a relatively important change, at least from the back end. Uh, in VB6 Aurora, the damage templates for each weapon are held in a database table, with one row for each combination of weapon type and damage amount. While this is simple, it means any new weapon or change to damage model has to be laboriously updated in the table. I know, I've seen the damn thing. It's a nightmare. You can barely read it and understand it, let alone update it. So... Thank you, Steve. For C-Sharp, the damage templates are generated in code as needed based on a gradient system. All the damage starts at a single point and is distributed right and left according to the gradient setting. Any column which has damage greater than the gradient checks left and right. If an adjacent column has a damage amount that is lower than the current column damage minus the gradient, a single point of damage is moved to that column. The adjacent column with lower damage is used first. The code cycles back and forth through the columns until no more adjustments are necessary. For example, missile damage has a gradient of 1, therefore there cannot be a gap of 2 damage between adjacent columns. Laser damage has a gradient of 3, so any gap of 4 damage between columns is corrected. Here are some examples for 25 damage for a variety of weapons. Particle lenses cause damage in a single column. Gauss cause only a single point of damage and Mazon ignore armor. Now, there is a little bit of a change to that later on down the road that we will cover much later. This information is a little bit dated. The template generation takes about a millisecond, so there is no performance issue. This means that new weapons with higher gradients can be added very easily. Now, two very important things to note. First things first, can be added very easily. Are, are these gradients available in the database? Because that would be really, really good if they were. The second much, 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 much more important point that I would like to make very, very visible. What the hell is this? Steve, are you adding stuff that you haven't talked about yet? Hmm. And with that, I will leave you for today. Join me tomorrow where we will continue covering the changes for C-Sharp Aurora every day for the rest of this month until launch, which hopefully will actually happen this month. Please, Steve. Links down below for the official Aurora Discord, Reddit, and forums where you can join the discussion and the hype. I, of course, am Sobedian, and I will see you next time.